The European Court of Human Rights has ruled in favor of Swiss pensioners that their government's failure to act on climate change violated their human rights. It's the first time the court has accepted such an argument and opens the door to more legal challenges. But it wasn't all wins for activists. The judges in Strasbourg threw out a similar case brought by young Portuguese climate campaigners on procedural grounds. Another case brought by a French former mayor was also ruled inadmissible. Now, the Swiss campaigners welcomed the landmark ruling after seven years of legal battles. So what I have understood is that Switzerland has really done too little to combat the climate crisis and has therefore violated human rights. That's a nice victory. The Paris Climate Agreement was ratified with the 1.5 degree target, which is no longer achievable. So effective measures must now be taken wherever possible as quickly as possible. We have known for 50 years that something has to be done. And now let's go straight to Strasbourg, where DW correspondent Bernd Rieger is standing by. Uh, Bernd, we just heard uh, two of the Swiss women. Uh, you have been uh, talking to them. Uh, what else have uh, they been saying about the court's decision? Yeah, the elderly Swiss ladies are very cheerful because they say that's more than we would have ever expected. Um, the court, and also some legal experts here say they were surprised that the court actually said uh, that the protection against climate change is part of the human rights in Europe and now everybody can sue its uh, state or government uh, if he thinks that uh, they don't do enough. So this is a landmark case. It opens uh, legal pathways in many, in much of uh, litigation that might come. Um, and the senior ladies now expect that Switzerland will do something. But a spokesperson of the Swiss government that I also spoke to said, well, on the ground, nothing will actually change because the government maintains that they are doing enough against climate change. Uh, so this whole thing is back in the political arena now in Switzerland and one has to wait what actually will come out of this trial in practical matters. Mm. So a win of sorts for the Swiss, but two cases dismissed. What were the reasons behind that decision? Yeah, the European Court of Human Rights did not actually go into the substance of these two cases from Portugal and France uh, because it said the, the French um, uh, applicant is not living in France anymore, so he cannot uh, claim that the government is doing something against him. Case dismissed. And then the Portuguese case where six youngsters uh, have filed applications with, with the court, it says um, these youngsters have not um, exhausted the legal path in Portugal. They have to do that at first and then come to the court here in Strasbourg and also uh, claiming or trying to sue 32 other uh, uh, states in Europe is not admissible. Uh, and also they, this case was thrown out. That is Bernd Rieger, their reporter from Strasbourg. Thank you very much, Bernd. And with me now in the studio is DW's senior climate reporter, uh, Louise Osborne. Louise, what's your main takeaway now from this decision? I mean, obviously it was a setback for the French and Portuguese cases, but they were made inadmissible on mere details. And it was a huge success for the, the Swiss group who um, have now had this issue of climate change connected with their human rights, which obviously uh, opens up a whole world for, for others seeking to make the same argument in their own countries. And um, Switzerland is not alone in having uh, goals that are just set too low. So uh, people will be looking at their own countries and seeing how um, they can also look to take court action where that is also the case. Now, this verdict or, or this decision comes on a day where scientists say that March was the hottest ever recorded uh, uh, March. Uh, what does this mean for the action that governments are taking? Well, I mean, exactly. We've, we've seen records set every month over the last 10 months. We're seeing a huge amounts of extreme weather um, in Europe, uh, particularly, which is also one of the, the fastest and uh, most heating uh, continents in the world. So um, the, the action that governments are taking here is not sufficient. Um, NGOs, scientists have all said this. They've said that uh, the European 
European uh, Union's actions or promises for action on climate change would see a three degree rise in um, global temperatures, which is obviously way too high. It's below Paris, right? It's way over Paris. Way I mean. over Paris. I mean, Paris is set at 1.5 degrees, yeah. so this would double that. Um, so it's clear that they're not doing enough. Um, there's no date to phase out fossil fuels yet, uh, which is something that they should, in theory, be moving towards, um, scientists say. Um, and they're relying on technology like carbon capture storage to basically be able to continue pumping out fossil fuels that are leading to global warming, and uh, it can't continue like that. Mm. So what what other avenues are there now for, for, uh, for activists to hold the governments to account? Uh I mean, obviously, um, court action is still completely open, um, despite those two cases that were ruled inadmissible. Um, like I said, it's, it's set a precedent, the, the Swiss verdict, for people to come forward with um, complaints about uh, their human rights being violated on uh, the basis of climate change. Um, there are already many, many court cases taking place around the world, um, and they will continue to be taken against uh, national uh, governments and states. Um, so we will see that continue. Thank you very much, Louise Osborne, our senior climate reporter.